Well, hey, economics fans, it is Thursday. I hope you're having a good day. It is sixth period, and the day is almost done. Hang in there. You've almost made it to Friday. Well, today we're continuing our conversation about market structures, and so I hope this conversation has been interesting to you so far. If you have not already done so, take a few minutes to work on your vocabulary. It is due tomorrow. So please make sure that you get that done and turned in tomorrow. So take a few minutes, take about 10 minutes and work on that together, please. Welcome back. And uh, we're going to begin by considering a product that you would normally buy. What is the price of that product? And before we've talked about what price that you believe, um, uh, you would no longer buy it. But let's pick as a class a topic, or uh, excuse me, a product. It could be a tennis shoe, it could be something consumable, whatever it is. Um, each group pick a product, you vote on the product that you want to pick, and uh, what is the price of that product, and then let's figure out what you as a class, what the majority of the class would, would do. If it reached a certain price, you would no longer buy it. So if it is a basic pair of Nike tennis shoes, for example, at what price would the majority of the class no longer buy a basic pair of Nike tennis shoes? Uh, what percentage of the class, for example, wouldn't buy a pair of Wrangler jeans at all? And if anyone would, what price would you no longer pay if it reached that price? So that's what I want you to do. As a class, pick a product, pick a brand, pick a product, what price would the majority no longer buy it? Have that conversation and we'll be back. All right, so we've talked about the different market structures. We've talked about uh, oligopoly, and today we're talking about monopolistic competition. Companies that compete in an open market to sell a product that's similar but not identical. Blue jeans, tennis shoes, um, groceries, uh, Home Depot and Lowe's, you can buy the uh, same two by four. So they're, they're similar stores. Lowe's and Home Depot are similar stores. And in a monopolistic conf uh, a competition, there are lots of firms, few barriers to entry. Uh, they have little control over price and they try to differentiate their products. Now you might argue with me about them having little control over their product. However, um, generally speaking, this is true. Um, there's a pair of tennis shoes that I love, um, Nike Air Monarchs. My wife tells me I am not allowed to buy them and I'm not allowed to wear them because they make me look like an old dude. I argued with her forever until I looked around and like everybody over 60s wearing Air Monarchs or those New Balance, they look almost identical. I'm not allowed to buy them. Now, those are a basic shoe at a basic price. And one, if you were to double the price of that shoe, you now are in an entirely different uh, value for shoe, for the shoe, the style, the wear, the brand, all that stuff. So Nike has very little control over what they sell a Nike Air Monarch for. New Balance has very little control over what they sell that basic white tennis shoe for. If they go much higher than that, no one's gonna buy it because they're going to switch to a different product. So in a monopolistic competition, a business has very little control over what they set the price at because it's quickly going to price themselves out of the market or they're going to differentiate to a different shoe. Speaking of differentiation, differentiation is the primary way a company is going to get people to buy their product instead of a different product. So let's have another conversation if we could. Pick a product in your group and how is it that that company differentiates themselves so that you buy it? How does Apple differentiate themselves from Android to get teenagers to buy it? How does Nike get people to buy their shoe? How did Air, uh, Hey Dudes get people to buy their shoe? How did Sheen get people to start buying stuff from their website? How do companies differentiate to get you to buy their product? To pick a product and how do they differentiate it and they get your business? Talk about that and then we'll share together. 
Okay, well there's lots of different ways that companies can differentiate themselves and you see that on the next slide. There are four different ways that companies can engage in differentiation and non-price discrimination. They can change the physical characteristic, they can change the location, they can change the service level, and through um, advertising image and status. Um, location, location, location. Did you know that almost always McDonald's builds first and Burger King builds second? Burger King almost never builds a restaurant before McDonald's does. And Burger King only usually builds a restaurant in close proximity to McDonald's. Look at Callahan. Burger King is across the street. McDonald's drive through is always busier than Burger King. It, is, it has to do with differ, differentiation. It's the location and it's the service level. McDonald's, if you Google it, and you might even want to do this as a class, but, there are, but McDonald's, Wendy's, and Chick-fil-A are the fastest three drive throughs in 2022. They were listed in 2022 as the fastest three drive throughs in the fast food industry. So it makes sense that these three businesses are going to have the, the most business. Wendy's, Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, fastest drive-through. It's a service level differentiation. And then image, status, etc. cetera. Um, uh, Swifty, right? Uh, Taylor Swift. Uh, it is amazing to me how much that woman has influenced imaging and uh, and dress fashion. There's my niece is a Swifty and she loves to dress like Taylor Swift. Now she's in tenth grade, I believe, but uh, she loves dressing like Taylor Swift. I well, I'll leave my opinions about Taylor Swift to myself. You're either a fan or you're not, and you either like her fashion or you don't but advertising image status sells. It's a way for uh, businesses to differentiate themselves from other businesses, okay? So moving on, we have what's called an oligopoly. And an oligopoly is a market dominated by a few large profitable, profitable firms. So market, um, excuse me, monopolistic competition and oligopoly. These are words that are going to be on your test. An oligopoly is a market dominated by a few profitable firms, monopolistic competition, lots of companies, but uh, that sell similar products. Oligopoly is a market dominated by a few large profitable firms. Pepsi, Coke are the two main, uh, main companies in the beverage industry. PepsiCo is one of the largest, Kraft, Nestle, uh, these are large, massive corporations. So uh, these individuals are going to be the primary players in an oligopoly. Um, what is it that an oligopoly can do to differentiate their products? So how does Pepsi get your business instead of Coke? How does Coke get your business instead of Pepsi? Talk about that together. Now, one of the things that a company cannot do is grossly undercut their competitor. So example, if a six pack of Pepsi goes for five bucks, Coca-Cola cannot sell their six pack of Coca-Cola for a dollar. It's called price fixing, price gouging, and or price fixing, I'm sorry. The opposite is price gouging. And a company can be accused of trying to engage in a practice to drive their competitors out of the business, out of business. So this stops companies that are big from eliminating companies that are smaller. Uh, they just can't do it. It's uh, price fixing and it's illegal. Uh, price uh, gouging is also illegal. You cannot do the opposite. You can't sell a for $20 when a hurricane is coming. It's price gouging. It's illegal. Now to end today, we're going to look at oligopolies through the eyes of Batman. And there is a video and if it's not already on your screen, go to YouTube, search for Econ Movies Season 1, Episode 8, Oligopolies Explained Through Batman. And I hope you have a great rest of your day, and we will see you tomorrow. It's Friday, and you matter. Friday's coming. Bye-bye.